This is a projectile motion question. We have a projectile travelling at 200 metres per second and a rail car travelling at 100 metres per second. How on earth can we get the projectile to land in the rail car? Well, the answer is we need the projectile to have a horizontal component of its velocity that is equal to, to that of the rail car, that is 100 metres per second. So we can begin by drawing a vector triangle. We want to find the angle theta. We know that the hypotenuse of this triangle is 200, that is the launch speed of the projectile, and the horizontal component needs to be 100. So what is the angle that will produce that? We know the adjacent, we know the hypotenuse, so we should use the cosine. Cos theta equals two. 100 divided by 200, which is 0 0.5, and one of the trigonometric identities we should know is that the cos of 60 equals 0 0.5, so therefore our theta here is 60 degrees. The key thing to remember with all projectile motion questions is that we have to be able to treat the horizontal and the vertical motion entirely separately, so just a reminder here, uh, that our u is 200, our horizontal we know is 100, and we, we need to find out our vertical component in order to deal with working out the maximum altitude. The maximum altitude we can work out by working out the vertical component of the initial velocity and then working out how long it takes for that to reach zero. So the vertical component it's going to be 200 sine 60 degrees, which is equal to 200 multiplied by root 3 over 2. Again, that's another trigonometric identity that we need to be aware of. We can simplify that to 100 root 3. Now, we're interested in the vertical component when the velocity is 0, that is how long it takes to reach a velocity of 0 we know that the acceleration due to gravity is minus 10 metres per second squared. We want to find out the time, so we need to select a SUVAD equation that will do that. The one to use here, V equals U plus AT. Rearrange that to find T, V minus U divided by A. Zero, take away 100, root 3. divided by minus 10 and that will give us 10 root 3 which is equal to approximately 17.3 seconds. Now we're interested in how far along the rail car has travelled by the time the projectile lands in it, and for that to happen, the, the projectile needs to go up to its maximum point and return again, which will take twice as long as our answer to the previous question, because it's got to go up and then back down again. So, horizontally, we're only th thinking about the horizontal direction now, there is zero acceleration, there are no forces acting horizontally, we, we assume there is no air resistance. Therefore, this is a speed distance time calculation. So, speed equals distance over time. Distance equals speed times time, which is going to give us one hundred, which was the horizontal component of the speed, multiplied by seventeen point three, multiplied by two, which equals three thousand. 460 metres, so that is the distance. Now we're asked to calculate the projectile's maximum altitude, so once again we're interested only in the vertical direction, so we can treat uh, the problem entirely separately, just in the vertical direction, so S is our unknown, our U, that is our initial velocity, we've already worked out as being 200 sine 60, which is 100 
root 3. We worked that out in an earlier part of this question. And our final velocity is 0. This is the point at which the uh, projectile stops moving. Our acceleration is minus 10 metres per second per, per second. So we need to select a CVAT equation to use here. And the best one would be v squared equals u squared plus 2as. So s equals v squared minus u squared divided by 2a. We don't know what, well v squared is 0, so it becomes 0, take away 100 root 3 squared divided by minus 20 so we're left with minus 10,000 times 3 divided by minus 20 which equals minus 30,000 divided by minus 20 therefore our final distance equals three thousand divided by two, which is fifteen hundred meters. Okay, it should be quite a nice, simple, straightforward question here. We just need to work out three kinetic energies: the kinetic energy of the rail car, the kinetic energy of the projectile in the vertical component, and the kinetic energy of the projectile and its horizontal component. So let's start with the rail car with a mass of 200 kilograms and a velocity of 100 meters per second. Kinetic energy equals half mass times velocity squared. So that gives us 100 times 10,000 is 1 times 10 to the power of 6 joules. Now let's have a look at the kinetic energy of the projectile. First of all, starting with the horizontal direction where the velocity is 100 meters per second and the vertical component is 100 root 3 meters per second. So the kinetic energy in the horizontal direction, in the x direction, equals 0 0.5 times 10 kilograms times 100 squared which gives us 50 times 10 to the power of 3 joules, 50 kilojoules, or 5 times 10 to the 4. Switching now to our y direction, kinetic energy equals 0 0.5 times our mass, which is still 10, times 100 
root 3 squared. So that's 5 times 100 squared times 3. which gives us 15 times 10,000 or 150 times 10 to the power of 3 joules. That's 150 kilojoules or 1.5 times 10 to the power of 5 joules. Once again, we're being asked to work out the maximum altitude this time using uh, kinetic energy rather than uh, Suvat equation. So we know from the previous question that the kinetic energy in the y direction is 150 times 10 to the 3 joules. So we should be aware that the maximum kinetic energy that it can gain is going to be equal to the maximum gravitational potential energy that it had at the top of its, uh, of its projectile journey. So therefore, 150 times 10 to the 3 joules equals mgh, gravitational potential energy. So we can rearrange that to get h equals 150 times 10 to the power of 3 divided by our mass and g. So that's 150 times 10 to the 3 divided by the mass, which is 10, and gravity, which is 10. That gives us 150 times 10 to the 1, which is equal to 1500 metres, which confirms our previous answer using the Suvat method. In order to show that the velocity of the car doesn't change, we need to use the principle of conservation of momentum. So we're going to think only in the horizontal direction. Let's first of all calculate the momentum before the collision. So P equals mv, which is equal to the mass of the projectile multiplied by its velocity of 100 plus the mass of the rail car multiplied by its initial uh, momentum, which will give us a total initial momentum of 1,000 plus 20,000, which equals of course, 21,000. So that is the initial momentum. Now, the principle of conservation of momentum says that in all collisions, momentum is conserved. So therefore, after the collision, we must also have a momentum of 21,000 kilograms. And that will allow us to rearrange to find the, the V, the new V of the rail car. So P equals MV once again, which in this case, equals 21,000 because momentum has been conserved. So we can rearrange that to find that V is going to be 21,000 divided by the combined mass of the projectile and the rail car, which is 10 plus 200 so V equals 21,000 divided by 210, which will give us a final velocity of 100 metres per second, which is exactly what we started with. So therefore, there is no change of velocity. And finally, they want us to find out the kinetic energy of the combined car plus projectile after the projectile has landed. So again, using kinetic energy is half mv squared, so that's 0 0.5 multiplied by the combined mass, which is 210, multiplied by the speed of the combined projectile and car squared, 
that is 100 squared. So the kinetic energy equals one million fifty thousand joules or one point zero five times ten to the power of six joules.